Well, howdy there, friends, and welcome back. The show still hasn't got a title. Again, maybe Creation Station. Who knows what it ever is. But the main thing is that this is the review show. I am John Morris, your friendly artist, author, and coach for The Creative Mind, and we're reviewing something else that's really awesome. I've got my specs on this week, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Folks, as we've talked about in the previous video, we're reviewing products on here that is designed to ideally make your life a little bit better. In this technological age, it's very hard to know who to trust, what products to trust, and really what works and what does the job. A lot of products you'll find have very, very differing reviews, and none more so than our product test of this week, and it is the Google Pixel 6a. Small little box for a powerful little thumb. So if you've got questions about this phone, make sure you put them in the chat box because we're going to be reviewing this and literally crunching this for everything that it's worth today. So come on in and let's begin. Okay friends, well, the Google Pixel 6a, quite a mouthful isn't it? It's quite a little, little box for a little, little thumb. Now, I have to say, when I was looking at this one, I saw so many different reviews out there. There's very, very mixed reviews around this. Some say it's really glitchy, some say it's difficult to use, some say the thumbprint is really awkward to use. Other people say this is one of the greatest phones that Google have ever made. It is up there with contenders such as Huawei and Samsung. Well, it wouldn't go that far, but it is an interesting little model for sure. So, as you can see, as soon as you unpack it, and again, we've got it all set up, um, you got your little box, which is something taped to it, and it comes in this nice little case. Well, it's not even so much a case, it's more of a protective sticker, basically. And this is it. This is the Google Pixel 6e. It's very, very small. A lot smaller, obviously, than the, the Honor 4 uh, Magic Lite, which we reviewed last time. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's, it's a small phone. Now, I went for the white back, okay? I thought, I haven't had a white back before. I think it's actually called Chalk. So I went for that, and I thought, hmm, this is interesting. This is interesting for sure. Um, and it is a very interesting phone. Before I get to the phone, what we're going to look at is the bits and pieces that come with it. So, the first thing that you will notice is, like the Honor Magic 4, it comes with no headphones. Unlike the Honor Magic 4, it comes with no charger. All it comes with is this wire. Now, a lot of homes are built with uh, USB uh, plug sockets um, built into their houses, so it's not an immediate problem. However, if you're living in an older house and you're expecting this to come with a charger, you think, oh great, all these new fast chargers are out, I'm sure it'll come with one of those, especially for the price, which we'll talk about momentarily. It's a bit of a disappointment. The other thing is as well, it gives you a cable obviously to, ca to, to, to uh, connect from one phone to the other. Now that's great. The only problem that I found was it doesn't hold its connection. Now whether that was a problem with the Google or with the Honor 4 Magic Lite, I have no idea, but it was a problem nonetheless. There are several uh, little bits and pieces that come along with this. There's a little uh, USB connector as well. Again, what, what that's for, maybe it's for, uh, for charging directly. I'm not exactly certain, to be honest with you. Um, as someone that's been around, as I say, on the days that Raphael was delivering his paintings to the Vatican, I need things to be simple, I need things to work really well, especially with the amount of content that we're creating and all the stuff that we're putting out there. I need it to work really, really well. The Google Pixel 6a doesn't. I've got to be honest, it really is quite challenging, I found, to use now, first thing you'll see when you, when you turn it on, your button to turn it on is normally here, down on this side. Where they've placed it is up here. So anyway, you press it on, and it comes on. It's got a nice picture there, if you can see that, of, of Google, nice, nice text. And the screen itself is fine. Um, follow my thumbprints. But the screen itself is fine. Um, and, and, it, and it comes on relatively quickly, and it works rather well. The first thing as well that you'll notice as soon as the screen comes on is the fact that A, it goes off really quickly, but B, it doesn't go all the way to the sides. That's not a big issue. Okay. So then you come on in and it, it gives you your time and everything. It's Again, it works really quickly. That's something that has got in its favour. And then you come in and you put your password in 
It's got a nice, it's got a nice little vibrate feeling every time you touch it, which is kind of super cool. You know, it's just a little bit, oh, that's a little bit different. Uh, once you get used to the uh, the unique, shall we say, placements of the up and down volume buttons and the on and off buttons, um, it's relatively simple to figure out. However, what isn't relatively simple to figure out is settings. Now, I don't know if you can see there, but if you can, you will see that up here we've got internet, we've got Bluetooth, we've got flashlight, we've got do not disturb. No settings. So if you're looking to quickly move around your navigation bar, because remember, it never usually comes with the three little navigation bars at the bottom, you're going to struggle. That is, unless you know you've got to pull down again. And even then, it's not exactly clear. You've got your lighting up here, you've got device control, wallet, airport, uh, alarm, but it's right down here that you press, and obviously you go through it and you do all of that. So, if you're using a phone for the very first time, and this is a little thing for Google. If you're using a phone for the very first time, you want it to be as simple as possible. We have a little phrase in business that says, if you confuse them, you lose them. And with this phone in particular, I found it quite frustrating for the first hour or so to really get everything set up, particularly with my thumbprint. Now, I went and did my thumbprint, and I don't know if it's gonna come up this time. Right, there we go. So we've got my thumbprint. Now, see if it works. See, I don't know if you saw that, See if we can do it again, maybe a little bit closer. But you put your thumbprint in, and it comes up with the numbers. Now what is the point in that? If I put my thumbprint in, I want it to open. Equally, if I put my face in there, there is no facial recognition. It just comes up again with the number pad. This can be immensely frustrating, especially if you're looking at working quick. If you're, if you're looking to get a great photo, for example, and it just isn't, you know, it, it, the phone isn't opening, then it's going to slow everything down and bang, your image may go, the lighting may go very, very quickly. So anyway, th that aside, let's, let's go in. Let's, let's put the passcode in. And you've got to press the enter key in order to do the passcode. Anyway, so now of course we go to one of the main things that I always look for as a content creator, as a professional artist, um, is the camera. Now, the camera on this actually is pretty decent. If you can see here, it is, it's pretty decent. It has, let's see, it's got, it zooms, it's a seven times zoom, but unfortunately it gets very grainy after, let's just see, make sure it's not the lighting. Yeah, it gets, it, it does okay up until about 3.4. Um, now, for the wide cam, that is actually pretty impressive. That is actually quite a nice wide cam shot that you've got there. It's not grainy, it's not pixelated. You can alter the light and the darkness, the contrast and the brightness um, up the top, very, very nice. And it even gives you a little, what we call plumb line, so as you know if your image is straight. However, as I say, when you zoom in to a certain point, it gets rather grainy. We'll show you all this, of course, on, uh, on, a, on a separate video. So if we just pop this in, just as you can see, okay. Makes a nice little beeping noise when you're about to zoom in and you zoom and zoom and zoom and zoom and zoom and it starts getting quite grainy. Anywhere up to five times and it is really grainy. So a beautiful picture now just becomes refracted light or reflected light, sorry. But you zoom out again to sort of 0.6 and even to, oh, no, there's no wide, there's no wide lens on this, uh, on this particular camera. Now that's interesting. Most cameras now have a wide angle lens. Uh, and that, that is, if you're looking at painting at that size, for example, and you want to zoom out, that is quite a big drawback. Um, so as you can see here on this little cat painting, it's, it's nice, it's nice, it's nice, it's nice. Now I'm not changing any of the, features, but you get into a certain point, it's not auto-focusing, even with me tapping, it's still not auto-focusing. Again, that's a big thing, especially if you're looking to do something close up. Um, again, like I said, the, the, the overall camera itself is fine. One of the pluses for this camera, I have to say, is the stabilization mode that is on. Uh, and again, this is something you can turn on, you can turn off. Um, I've tested this against the Honor Magic 4. You're gonna to get to see that in the next video. Um, it worked really well. The Honor Magic 4 was all over the place. The uh, P, 
I think it was the P6. Yes, it was the P6. P6E. So many different names. Um, the, auto, uh, the, the, the P6E was really stable, worked really, really well. Um, so that's definitely something that's, that's in its favour. So again, you, you, you try and do this. Oh, there we go, it came on that time. Now, th advantages that this phone has that the Honor Magic 4 doesn't have, we'll just talk about a little bit, because we're going to talk about more in the next video, but is the time-lapse mode. It is a really, really cool time-lapse mode. Um, and you can do, you know, five times, um, and whatever it was that you might want to have. You know, you can do some beautiful time-lapses in there and it creates uh, some great effects very quick of course uh, you've also got the slow motion mode portrait one of the things that this phone does really really well for portrait mode is the fact that it blows out the background as well so if you're looking at taking a selfie um, you know it, it does really well so if I take a selfie nice smile then it begins to edit it and it takes out all the background which is super cool um, and and it, yeah, it blows everything. So as you can see right there, it focuses on me and not on the background. Just just a simple little things. It's it's a really cool feature, and there is no sort of blurring around the edges uh, that that you know confuse things. So that's a super little feature that it's got right there. Um, it's also got variety modes as well, which you can check out, um, such as panorama, film sphere, and lens, uh, which again, super awesome. Other areas where this phone uh, does well, we're going to pick a video now so you guys can have a listen. Again, we, we listened to Matt Knopfler before, so I feel it's only fitting to do Matt Knopfler again. In fact, just a little note there where I'm moving things around, again, it felt rather clunky. It wasn't smooth uh, like other videos are. So let's take a listen to the audio. We had it up at half volume before. Ooh. Okay, what I'm actually getting there is quite a lot of pain in my ear from listening to that. Um, there are certain sounds when they are muffled out, and this is something obviously if you've done sound engineering before, you, you will know. If you put a an audio track into a certain level of bass, it's going to be boom, 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 boom. But if you muffle it quite a lot, it can actually make you feel quite sick. That's making me feel quite sick just listening to that. So we're going to do this next part quite quickly. I'm going to put the volume up. In fact, no, I'm not, because again, it, it there, there was confusion right there. I'm going for the sound button. It's not there. Um, so let's... And this isn't rehearsed, folks. Okay, when you get down really quiet. So that is a massive something. That's the first time that I've tested this. A lot of this you're seeing live. Again, it's not pre-filmed or anything like that. It's not scripted, as you can tell. Um, the sound on that is poor. Very, very, very poor. Um, actually made me feel sick, genuinely. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to finish up this video and then um, I won't be doing that again. Um, I do apologize for that, folks. Um, other areas that unfortunately this phone lags quite a lot is video editing. Um, so again, like we talked about before, with the Huawei P20, P30, hopefully in the P40 when that arrives, uh, you could literally click your videos, you could select them all and click do um, a... Uh, a video or a, or a collage or a movie um, in this it literally just plays back to you the video or, or the photos that you have seen so to give you an example um, if I am doing see again just even the navigation of this it's not and I know I know how to use tech folks it's not that it's not that I'm uh, tech illiterate or anything like that so I took a few videos the other day deliberately to put this together and just the navigation of it is really poor. Um, yeah, it's not even pulling up what I want it to pull up now. So again, going back to the review where it was really clunky, it's really um, unpredictable, it doesn't scan a lot well in terms of your thumbprint, I completely agree. I really, really do. In the next video, of course, we're going to put these two phones against each other so you can see which is better, the Honor Magic 4 or the Pixel um, 6a. 
um, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take maybe an hour just to to uh, to recover from um, the, the the noise disturbance. Um, but uh, yeah, in, in terms of the uh, plus points, we'll, we'll start with the negative. In fact, no, we'll start with the plus points. I think there's, there's uh, I think it's more important to know. So the plus points are, it, it functions very quickly. It's got a good refresh rate. Um, the camera quality is okay. Um, the, in, in terms of a wide, a normal lens, it doesn't have a wide lens, but in terms of a normal lens, it's okay. Um, the, Two cameras that are on the back, yeah, they're, they're okay. And then the one that's on the front, as I say, it's it's a nice it's a nice camera that's on the front. What lets this film down in many ways, as I say, is, is the the fact of the, the um, touchpad and everything else. As I say, the front camera is nice. It's a very very nice camera. It's up there with the Honor Magic Four. Um, but really, what lets this film down? The sound. The uh, the zooming in of the um, camera. I do apologize folks, since hearing that noise, that it, it's really just disturbed me um, quite a lot. Um, I don't think I need to say anything more actually with regards to um, that phone. I think quite clearly it is a phone that I would not buy at all. In the next video we're going to put it up against the Honor Magic 4 Lite. We're going to run all the specs. You're going to get to see everything. Um, so thank you for watching. Thank you for, for kind of tolerating that. I really do um, appreciate that. Um, do all the awesome things as always. Like, share and subscribe. Tell your friend because it could be the very thing that they need to save them from buying that phone. Um, I said right at the beginning of uh, the, the video before that I, I would absolutely have a categoric answer as to which phone I couldn't be more glad to send back. I was going to save it for the next video, but I think as you've probably gathered, I've never been more glad to get that out of my life, <laughs> as, as I am. The Honor Magic, oh, the, the, the um, Google Pixel 6a is not a phone I would recommend at all. Um, if that's the best that Google can put together, I would say they really need to, to up their game uh, massively. Um, we are going to run, we're going to put the tests together, um, so do let your friends know, share, like, share and subscribe, come and see the next video, it's going to be far more frequent and, and fluid than, uh, than, than this one has been, um, but uh, yeah, do, do check out the next video because that lets people know on YouTube that this is content that's worth watching, it's worth pushing, um, and uh, it's worth supporting as well. And I thank you so much for that. Come and check us out at thejohnmorris.co.uk as well um, for our weekly, in fact, almost for our daily blog now. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Namaste, my friend.